Time now for the business news on the program with Charles Bellegrau. Charles, great to see you as always. Hi, Delano. You're starting out with a look ahead to the crucial Federal Reserve meeting. That's right, Delano. Uh, the meeting uh, started uh, on Tuesday and will uh, conclude uh, later this Wednesday in Washington, D.C., uh, an announcement uh, scheduled for 2 p.m. Eastern time, so that's around 8 p.m. Paris time. Uh, the U.S.'s central bank is uh, the one that sets the basic uh, interest rate at which banks borrow money with the objective of bringing down inflation to a target 2%. Since uh, March 2022, the Fed has raised its benchmark rate interest rate 11 times to its current uh, range of 5.25 uh, to 5.5 percent, the highest level in more than 22 years. The thinking here is that raising the cost of borrowing will cool economic activity so as to slow down the increases in consumer uh, prices that we've seen in the past year or so. So what should we look out for at the conclusion of this meeting? First off, the rate decision. The consensus this time is that the Fed will leave it unchanged. Perhaps more importantly, observers will be on the lookout for longer term rate trends by pouring over the projections made by the members of the Fed in the coming months. This is a chart known as the dot plot. The question here is, are more rate hikes coming or have we seen the end of this monetary tightening cycle? And to help with that, projections on GDP, unemployment and inflation will be able to shed light as well as will the official statement released by the Fed and then the press conference held by Chair Jerome Powell about 30 to 45 minutes later on. So for more on this story, let's talk to Han Tan, who is the chief market analyst at Xfinity Markets in Abu Dhabi in the, in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, Han Tan, thank you for, uh, for being with us. Um, first off, can you uh, spell out for us why investors are all eagerly awaiting the results, the conclusion of, of this meeting? Right. So essentially, we all want to know right, whether the Fed is done with its rate hikes or how close to, they are to being done, right? Because that eventual peak for U.S. interest rates uh, would ultimately impact the performance of stocks, currencies, uh, bond markets, or even the amount that we pay for our uh, monthly mortgage payments, right, in the months ahead. So while today's meeting isn't exactly uh, uh, set to conclusively dispel all of the uncertainty, I think it will still be a very meaningful uh, experience and it will offer the fresher signals that markets can latch on to at least until the next Fed meeting. And, and speaking of signals, what for you will be uh, the most important piece of information or, or data to, to look out for? Yeah, and that will have to be the dot plot that you alluded to earlier in your intro. And, uh, you know, because, again, it bakes in all of the expectations that these Fed officials have, not just in terms of the outlook for GDP, but for inflation, or also the unemployment rates, right? I think, I think that's key. So, you know, whether or not th these U.S. interest rates will ultimately settle at a higher than uh, average level, or at least higher than what we've been accustomed to since the global financial crisis, I think that remains to be seen and we could garner more clues from this dot plot, uh, which is due later today. So is there a sense that this range of, of, of interest rates where we're at between uh, five to, to five and a half percent is, is going to be the, the new normal? Uh, where do you see rates uh, in, in, the, in the mid to long term? Right. So uh, instead of looking at just the nominal number, we're looking at the difference between where that interest rate is versus inflation. So in the past, it's usually about 50 basis points or 0.5% above where inflation is. So about two, two and a half percent. Right now, the, the concern is perhaps that range would have to be about uh, over 200 basis points, over 2% higher than what inflation is, right? So that's a real neutral rate that we're looking out for. But I think long story short, it, it very much depends on uh, not just the Fed's view on inflation, but really how resilient the U.S. economy is to withstanding these rate hikes, which are intended to demand uh, to, to, to destroy demand in the U.S. economy. A very uh, delicate balance, a lot of, a lot of calculations there uh, to, to take into account. Han Tan of uh, Chief Market Analyst at Xfinity Markets, thank you for being with us. And let's head now to the UK, where new data out Wednesday shows inflation slowing to its lowest level in 18 months. The one-tenth of a percent drop to 6.7 percent, defying expectations. But that might not deter the Bank of England from once again raising interest rates this week though it has sparked hopes among investors that if there is a rate hike, it could be the bank's last, at least for a while. Brian Quinn has this. 
A welcome surprise for the UK economy Wednesday, as the country's headline inflation figure fell slightly to 6.7% in August. With fuel costs on the rise, analysts had been predicting an acceleration of price rises. British Finance Minister Jeremy Hunt lauded the drop while acknowledging the figure remains far above the government's 2% target. If you look at the overall picture since it peaked last autumn, it is now down 40%. And that says the plan is working. But even at 6.7%, that is a lot of pain for ordinary families who are seeing their shopping bills go up, their fuel prices go up. A drop in inflation does not mean prices are going down, only that they're rising more slowly. August's moderation credited to lower hotel and airfare costs, along with the slowing of price hikes for food, though food inflation remains extremely high at 13.6%. Spurred on by supply chain disruptions and energy shocks over Russia's invasion of Ukraine, inflation in the UK has been even worse than for the rest of the G7, peaking at 11.1 percent in October of last year. The country's cost of living crisis has sparked a series of strikes among British workers, whose pay has fallen far behind. The Bank of England, meanwhile, has raised interest rates 14 times from near zero up to five and a quarter percent in a bid to slow the price rises. Well, as mentioned, that uh, Federal Reserve meeting is the uh, top concern for global investors. So let's take a look at how the stock market is doing currently. Stocks in Europe are uh, trading higher as they await the announcement. Uh, the FTSE in London seeing the biggest gains after that positive inflation data we just talked about up uh, over uh, three quarters of a percent. The Paris Cat Gallant up uh, over one third of a percent. And let's end with the uh, latest fallout from the collapse of crypto trading platform FTX. Now, under new management, the company is suing founder Sam Bankman-Fried's parents, saying they funneled millions of dollars from the exchange for their personal use. Both of uh, FSB, SBF, as he's known, uh, parents are tenured professors at Stanford Law School. FTX alleges that uh, Joseph Bankman used company funds to pay, among other things, for flights for his friends and family to see the Formula One Grand Prix in France, while Barbara Freed may have used millions for political campaign donations. You'd think that if you're a law professor, <laughs> you, you know how to stay on the right side of law, but obviously this is just a, a, an alleged offense so far. This, this is one of those stories that keeps on giving. Thank you very much for that, Charles. Charles Pellegrano there with the Business News. More news coming up with me. Stay with us. This is France 24.